Hello friends. Welcome to the session on support vector regression. In the previous lecture, you already seen support vector machine. Now support vector regression, as the name suggests, is a regression algorithm that supports both linear as well as non-linear regression. So support vector regression is a statistical method that examines the linear relationship between two continuous variables. It differs from SVM in the way that SVM, that is support vector machine, is a classifier that is used for predicting discrete categorical labels, while SVR is a regressor that is used for predicting continuous ordered variables. SVR uses the same principle as SVM, but for regression problems. In simple regression, the idea is to minimize the error rate, while in SVR, the idea is to fit the error inside a certain threshold. That is, the role of SVR is to approximate the best value within a given margin called epsilon cube. Right? The problem of regression is to find a function that approximates mapping from an input domain to real numbers on the basis of a training sample. So regression form involves the task of deriving a mapping function which should approximate from input variables to a continuous output variable. So the diagram must be looking quite similar what we had seen already in SVM. But here you can see again the same thing. You have the hyperplane and you have positive hyperplane and the negative hyperplane. So here in SVR, we call them as decision boundaries. So in SVR, we basically consider the points that are within the decision boundary line. The best fit line, that is the, this green color, right? That has a maximum number of points. Now decision boundary lines are at a distance epsilon from the hyperplane. Now these are the lines that are down at the distance drawn at the distance plus that is positive epsilon and negative epsilon that is positive supporting hyperplane and negative supporting hyperplane. It is used to create the margin between the data point. The points which are above the decision about the hyperplane are positive. The points which are classified as positive and the one which are below the hyperplane are classified as negative. Now in SVR we basically consider points that are within the decision boundary line. So SVR is similar to linear regression in that the equation of the line is y is equal to wx plus b referred to as hyperplane. Now the concept is same. This equation must be very clear. y is the output, w is the weight, x is the input and b is the y. The same thing what we have been using since neural network. right? Now the best fit line is the hyperplane that has maximum number of points. Now decision boundary lines are at the distance epsilon from the hyperplane. Here it is defined as a line that helps in predicting the target value. The data points on either side of the hyperplane that are closest to the hyperplane are called support vectors, which is used to plot the boundary line. Now support vectors are also clear what I already spoke in the previous lecture. Fine. Now, here the regression is performed at the higher dimension. So to do that, we need a function that should map the data points into its higher dimension. So this function is termed as the kernel. The type of kernel used in SVR is sigmoidal kernel, polynomial kernel, Gaussian kernel, etc. Now these are the equations for hyperplane and decision boundaries. So assuming that the equation of the hyperplane is y is equal to wx plus b, right? Then the equation of the decision boundary becomes that is upper decision boundary and the lower decision boundary that is wx plus b is positive epsilon and wx plus b is negative epsilon. Thus, any hyperplane that satisfies the support vector regression should satisfy this, right? Like if the value of this is less than it is less than lower side, then it is minus epsilon. If it's upper side, then it is positive epsilon. Fine. Now. The objective of SVR is to fit as many data points as possible without violating the margin. Now note that the classification that is in SVM, 
Use of support vector was to define the hyperplane, but in SVR, they are used to define the linear regression. Here we define a small error value epsilon, where error is equal to prediction minus actual. We know this, right? The value of epsilon determines the number of support vectors, and a smaller epsilon value indicates a lower tolerance for error. Thus, we try to find a line's best fit in such a way that wx plus b minus y is less than or equal to epsilon and y minus wx plus b is less than or equal to epsilon. Fine, just look at the position of y here. Right? Also, we do not care about errors as long as they are less than epsilon. So in this case, only those data points that are outside the epsilon error region will be contributing to the final cost calculation. Right? Now, simple example, if you talk about here, like if we are dealing with stock trading and we want to minimize the trading loss, but we do not care about loss as long as they are less than a certain value that is epsilon. Hence, the support vector regression model depends only on a subset of the training data points as the cost of function of the model ignores any training data close to the model prediction when the error is less than epsilon, right? Hence, only those points that are within the decision boundary and have the least error rate or are within the margin of tolerance are considered. Because of this, it gives you a best or a better fitting model. Now, working of SVR, how the SVR works. Given data points, right? Now, it works on the principle of SVM with few minor differences. Now, given the data points, it tries to find the curve, right? But since it is a regression algorithm, instead of using the curve as a decision boundary, it uses the curve to find the match between the vector and the position of the curve. Support vectors help in determining the closest match between the data points and the function which is used to represent them. Right? Now, what are the steps involved in modeling SVR? So the very first step is collection of the training set. Fine. Selection of the kernel along with its parameters and the regularization if required. Creation of correlation matrix. Then train machine to get the contraction coefficient that is alpha is equal to alpha i. And then create an estimator using the coefficient. So we look at all these steps one by one. First step is very simple. It is just collecting the data. So SVR requires a training data x comma y which covers the domain of the interest and is accompanied by the solution on the domain. So the data is collector training data as x comma y. Now x is independent variable and y is dependent variable. If you look at a simple example, now x can be the number of hours students spend studying. How many hours the student is spending on studying and y may be the marks obtained by the student. Though x is independent of y, but y may be independent of will be maybe dependent on x. Why? Because x is the number of hours spent in studying, and y is the marks obtained. Next, what we use the kernel we use is a Gaussian kernel. So choose a kernel and the parameter and regularization if needed. So here you can see the Gaussian kernel. This is now where nd is the dimension right, in every data point, and x and theta are the set of hyperparameters. Hyperparameters, the concept must be clear. We already spoke about hyperparameters in neural network, where they are used to fine tune the output so that the error is reduced. Now, the formation of the correlation matrix is easy to form. In this, we evaluate all the pairs of data points of the training set. After evaluating, Add the regularizers in the regularizer in the diagonal, we get a matrix, right? This is the matrix we get K of I and J using this formula. So epsilon is the regularizer and delta IJ is the Kronecker delta. Now Kronecker delta is nothing but is a function of two arguments that is I and J. 
right? If i and j are the same value, that is, if i is equal to j, then the function delta i j is equal to one. Otherwise, the Kronecker delta is equal to zero. Fine. This matrix is semi-definite and easy to use. It is used to represent the correlation matrix of the data in a higher dimensional space than the one from which we have derived the training set. Now, solving the matrix to form estimator. So this is the main part while creating the SVR machine. It is a plain linear algebra. Working of the machine can be described as, you can see vector alpha is equal to vector y. So y vector values that corresponds to the training set. K is the correlation matrix. What we have already seen here, this is what we have calculated the correlation matrix, fine. Alpha is unknown set that needs to be solved. Now solving alpha is a simple as just as need to invert the correlation matrix and apply it to Y, right? So you just need to invert the correlation matrix and apply it to Y. Now formulating the estimator. Once the value of alpha is known, we can easily go for the estimator. Using the coefficient found at the optimization step and the Gaussian kernel used, we can estimate Y star for test point X star, compute K and find the inner product of it with the alpha factors. So this is what, right? Now, from the previous equation, we can figure out that if we have inverted our matrix and our regularizer is zero, then the estimator perfectly passes through all our training data points. Okay, this happens because K is identical to the row in K, provided the test point is in the training set. Once we included the regularizer or got the required parameter, we don't need to recover our training set solution and they should be closed. I hope it is a bit clear. Okay. Now, so what were the steps we used for modeling the SVR? First, what we did, we collected the training set. Then we selected the Gaussian kernel. Then we created the correlation matrix, right? If you can just go through it. We selected the Gaussian kernel. Then we created the correlation matrix KJ, right? Then we create, we went for the creation of the correlation, but then we got the coefficient alpha, right? By inverting it. And then we formatted the estimator using this function, fine. Now, what are the advantages of SVR? It is robust to the outliers. Decision model can be easily updated. You can use multiple classifiers trained on the different types of data using the probability rules. It can improve the prediction accuracy by measuring the confidence in classification. SVR performs lower computations compared to other regression techniques. Its implementation is easy. Of course, the implementation is really very easy. In the next session, we'll see how we implement it. So the whole concept of SVR will be more clear. Now, when we're looking at these equations, you might find them as difficult, but when you're implementing it, there are already ready-made functions available in Python, which will do this for you, right? The kernel and all, it will do it for you. You don't need to go into the detail of it. You just need to select the kernel and the uh, equations are implemented automatically. So in the next session, we see some examples of implementation, fine? Now, these are the references what I've used to develop my lecture. I hope the concept is a bit clear. If any query, you can mail me or you can put it in a comment. Thank you. Stay home, stay safe.